And competitiveness in music is stupid. It's stupid because you can go out and buy anybody's record and buy the other person's record at the same time. You don't not buy another record because another record is out. Ain't nobody running out of money. Mm -hmm. You just don't like these other motherfuckers. That's why you didn't buy it. So the theory of my record dropping on the same day as 50 Cent, it doesn't mean I won't sell. If my record is just as good, it's going to sell. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we going to talk. Zulus. And it's really just a shout out. It's not like they're exchanging money. They're just saying we're all on the same team. So I was really intrigued with that, where it was like a union of rappers that all say we under the same umbrella. We cool. And I, I saw that as power. So I went to L.A. But like um, you were saying, as far as cultural, mm -hmm. L.A. is a little bit too street. For the term Zulu, that's that that is culturally not going to work in L.A. L.A. got a gang culture. So I studied Lucky Luciano, who created a thing called the Commission, which was a group of the five families, the mob families. And they made a decision to say, hey, look, we we all gangsters. But before we fight, we are willing to sit down. The bosses of each family agreed to a sit down. And that way we can stop a lot of these gang wars. And there were certain rules, like you can't take off a boss, you have to have permission, and all these different rules. I was like, if they were able to do this, and these are all gangsters and killers, I can do this with rap. So I took part Zulu Nation, part commission, and I created this thing called the Rhyme Syndicate in Los Angeles, which had everybody from Cypress Hill to Dub C and all these different people. Anybody that wasn't in NWA, or part of the NWA family, meaning Cube, and all snooping on them were syndicate members. There were groups on top of groups. So the rule is I'm not in charge of nothing. Like Kenny's not in charge of anything in the hip hop fraternity. All the groups or subdivisions are all have their own bosses. But there's only one agreement. Before we fight, we talk, right? And we talk to the bosses. That's it. Now, Kenny said, well, I want to do something hip hop fraternity. I said, well, this is the basically the, the way you set it up. You, you don't try to be the boss. You don't try to control. You're the founder, but you, my brother from Nigeria, Kenny doesn't have any pull over him. He just says, this is what we wish. And he, it's up to him to bring it to his team. Mm -hmm. Also, hip hop fraternity doesn't make any money at this moment. I said, you got, that's the best time to build a unit of people when there's no money. Because when the money comes in, that's when the division comes in. That's real. That's when everybody, so right now, this thing really just operates in a way to help each other. That's all it is. It's like a bunch of rap groups that are trying to share producers till somebody breaks. In the actual hip hop fraternity, I told them just a minute ago, what they need is a hit. That's they need, real. They need to start. But here's the question. When that group hits, will they rep the hip hop fraternity? Exactly. Or will they branch off and say, fuck y'all? You see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. That, that's, that's the question. Will they be loyal? When I broke from Syndicate, I was loyal and I got Everlast a record deal. I got Donald D a record deal. I got Divine Styler. Whether those groups were big or hit or what, Lord Finesse, I signed Lord Finesse. So all those groups, I was able to help. So the question is, as the hip hop fraternity starts to morph and gain power how that power is shared amongst the units because any one of the units of the hip hop fraternity can hit something can happen the texas chapter can say hey we have this opportunity to build this or that or that doesn't affect everybody but it still reps the name and the name moves up mm -hmm. yeah. you see yeah so it's it's a question of it's still an experiment is will loyalty remain once the money does come? Mm -hmm. That's that's the big question because I've interviewed a lot of people, and that's the thing that most of these guys with the record labels, the, the new the new John, the new people, the new guys are saying you don't know nobody until they get until money. They get money once they get the money, as you was just talking about. That's where the, the that's where hey, what what what's going to happen at this point? But here's something: the hip hop fraternity is not a record label. It's not even a management organization. It's just a group of 
friends yeah. that have all trying to. And my my whole thing was why compete? We all going in the same direction. Bam. And and and, and competitiveness in music is stupid. It's stupid because you can go out and buy anybody's record and buy the other person's record at the same time. You don't not buy another record because another record is out. Ain't nobody running out of money. Mm -hmm. You just don't like these other motherfuckers. That's why you didn't buy it. So the theory of my record dropping on the same day as 50 Cent, it doesn't mean I won't sell. If my record is just as good, it's going to sell. So the competitiveness is something that's really petty. It's yeah. stupid. It's not even necessary because everybody can eat in this business but you got to have a hit record so i think as the hip-hop fraternity merges into other levels i think the, the i think the real next move is hip-hop fraternity djs wow. but vado says to where now you start to control what people hear you got a lot of artists but now how many djs can you place in the clubs to where you guys now have a little bit of power to where you actually can control what's being heard. Wow. Radio is harder, but the clubs, you can pretty much get a hip hop. Control or infect him with mm -hmm. some of the people from your clique. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk.